Hello there, my YouTube family. Today I'm bringing you outdoor pottery. This is 30 year old outdoor Mexican pottery that I've had for a really, really long time in my backyard in its natural orange terracotta state. And I am wanting to bring in some color because let's face it, I can't grow plants. I can't grow plants. I don't have pops of color with flowers. So I like to paint my pottery so that it offers a little bit of energy and pizzazz around my pool space in my backyard. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today using Dixie Bell's brand new Terra paint, which is their clay-based paint. I have a lot of pots painted in their chalk mineral paint as well, but today I'm going to show you how to do it in the clay paint and we will see how they hold up together. All right, so let's talk about our color palette. I've chosen Blue Moon, which is a really pretty denim blue. And this here is Lonnie's Lagoon. I love Lonnie's Lagoon. It's a very swimming pool blue. And then Pistachio Green is a really bold pop of lime green that I just love and I can't wait to use. And lastly, we've always got to have a little bit of white for some highlight, and this one is called Moonbeam, and I think I just wanted to use it because I love the name Moonbeam. Okay, so it's time to lay down some paint. I think I have chosen the Blue Moon, which is the dark denim blue, um, to cover this red clay pot. Uh, the pots are rinsed, and that is it. They actually were rainwater rinsed the night before. Um, you can see here the, the paint is very thick. It's almost like pudding, and I'm just applying it with my premium chip brush. It is a great paint to use with uh, natural bristle brushes, but you can use it with anything. You can use it with spatulas. You can apply it with your hands, your fingers. It's actually a really good paint to touch and uh, get to know really well. You can help move it. With your fingers, um, don't be afraid to manipulate the paint in any way possible. You can see here in this video that the paint is actually drying as I paint. These, these pots were hot in the sun. This clay paint cooks and bakes just like mud. It will dry that quickly and it will change colors as it's drying. So as I'm painting this very warm pot, it's actually drying immediately while I'm painting it. And you'll also notice that the color changes in this paint. So I'll show you that more closely here in just a minute. But as you paint, it goes on a really dark color, but then as it dries, it lightens and becomes um, kind of a chalky look, but it's more, think about mud, when mud dries in the sun and you see it kind of crack and it sort of lightens, um, that's what it is. It's a clay-based paint. Um, what's beautiful about it though, is it will reactivate very, very easily with water. So you wanna have a water bottle nearby so that as you wanna start blending colors or uh, thinning out some areas, you just spray it with a little bit of water, give it a second and it just reactivates and keeps going. But the paint is highly pigmented. So even though you're spraying water on it, um, it doesn't really thin the color down very much. That's what's so beautiful about this product. So I'm just gonna continue working with this paint all the way around the pot. Now, the paint a little bit goes a long way. I'm not using water right here because I really want a good thick base coat. But if I wanted to really stretch that paint out, I could just apply a little bit of water and um, get a lot more coverage from it. But I really wanted to have a good thick base coat. Plus it's drying so quickly as I paint. Um, so let me just continue painting the face on this pot and then we'll move on over and add some pretty green to the other pot. All right, so we've wrapped up this blue pot from all sides and you can see it's already much lighter, but we're gonna deepen that color um, at the very end when we come back to seal the paint because the paint does need to be sealed. All right, so let's move on over to the other pot. It was not as red as the first pot. This one's a little bit more of a lighter baked orange. Remember I said these pots are about 30 years old. I've had them a long time. Um, so I am going to use um, pistachio green, which is a beautiful lime green. And just look at the coverage that you get just from that, just two brush strokes. Like I said, this was just a pot that was rinsed. I didn't prime it in any way. I'm using a premium chip brush and I'm applying this very thick pudding texture paint to the pot. Now the small, small metal can that you see it in, that is a um, prototype can that was sent to me as a sample from Dixie Bell Paint Company before they were actually put into their 
the cans that you can see there, um, the blue color that is to your right on the screen, right in the middle of the screen. Um, so I'm having a little bit of a difficult time dipping into that small metal can, but the paint is so, so pretty. It matches the sweet potato leaf of my plant that is in that pot. One of the very few plants that I actually have kept alive and actually have like three pink flowers growing there. That's shocking. Okay, so I have chosen Moonbeam. So I've only done the front side of the pot. I don't have the back side of the pot done, but just for the sake of showing you how I'm gonna do this, I've chosen Moonbeam, which is the white, and I've just added it to the rim, the top rim of this pot and sprayed it with a little bit of water. And sometimes you have to wait just a minute, let that water sort of soak into that paint before you actually can get that sort of blending drippy effect. Um, and actually when I'm spraying it with the water, it's blending with this pistachio green and giving me sort of like a highlighter yellow color almost. And I just keep adding a little bit more white to this and I keep spraying and it will just allow it to drip down the sides of the pot. I love this look on pottery. I did this with the chalk mineral paint as well, but this paint just works so beautifully with water and I'm just blending it up into the green. If you've ever had trouble blending colors in the paint world on furniture or whatever it is that you're working on, I encourage you to try this clay base paint. It will make you feel like a blending pro. If you'll notice here, see how I sort of spray in one area and I kind of dab the paint and then I come back and spray just a little bit more. Anywhere that you want any specific runs, you can kind of just tap your paint in that area, spray it with a little bit of water and get yourself um, a little bit more of that drippy action in that area. Now, if you don't like the drips, you don't have to keep the drips. You can just use the drips as water and continue to work your brush all the way down the side of that pot and get yourself a brand new color by doing that. You don't have to have the drips, but I'm actually looking for that look right here. All right, so while that is still wet, I've decided to dip into a little bit of this Lonnie's Lagoon. I'm gonna add a little bit of turquoise. Not sure exactly what I'll get here, but I know that these colors work really well together. So I'm just spinning uh, my brush that's dipped into Lonnie's Lagoon around the edge of that pot as well, around the neck of it, just exactly where I had added the, the um, Moonbeam White and just spraying it as well, just to add a little bit of blue to this pot as well. Just a tiny touch of blue. Okay, I like where that is. I think we're gonna let that set, let that water work, work its magic there, and we're gonna move on back over to the blue pot and start working on the face of the sun. All right, so to do the face of the sun, I really wanna start off with just sort of a dry brush look. I don't wanna add a lot of paint. So I'm picking up one of my brushes that I'd already used. I'm just wiping off that amount of paint onto this Big Daddy brush, which is a brand new brush by Dixie Belle, and I absolutely love it. I just wiped my paint off of that brush onto this brush, and I'm just using this big flat paddle brush to brush across in a dry brush fashion, and just instantly the sun really comes up off of the pot. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. You don't see any instant action from that, but I'm adding water to it just to sort of soften the paint a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back over it with this big paddle brush again. Now guys, I'm new to clay paint. I'm not, I am not a pro at the clay paint, but I am gutsy and I will just jump in there and try anything. And that's what I'm hoping you will do as well. I just continue to add paint. I'm gonna go back and forth here, adding a little bit of Moonbeam White. Then I'm gonna bring back in a little bit more blue. And I'm just going to just continue to play back and forth until I get the sun the way I want it. You can see here that I'm adding a lot more water right to the face of the, of the sun because I really want uh, the sun rays to be distinct or more painted than the face itself. Okay, so the pot is completely dry and I am now spraying it down with a little bit of water because I'm gonna come back in with some white. I did not really like just the pistachio green and the blue together. I feel like it needs some white. I wanna go for more of a salt water washed set by the ocean sort of look. Um, so I'm coming in with a little bit of white and I'm gonna be spraying that with water as well. And remember, I said I am no pro at this, so I'm just playing. I've got the white paint on. I'm just sort of using my big daddy brush to manipulate the white all over. I like having the green in the background, but the more I start moving the paint around, I'm like, what the heck? Let's just, let's just put it all on there and see what happens. 
So it got a little too washed out, no big deal, right? I just dip my brush back into that blue and I bring the blue back into the face of the sun again. Um, and then that way, when I spray down the rays of the sun, the white drips over the blue face. So sometimes you may feel like you're going backwards a little bit. Um, sometimes you may do something, you're like, oh, what was I thinking? But um, it's just paint. And the beauty of this clay-based paint is it dries so quickly. So just let it set for a minute and you can come right back in and, and change the direction that you were going. Okay, so since I've admitted that I'm just playing around, um, I decided to try this technique where I have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just spray spraying water on my brush and this paint activates so qu quickly with water that it's just running right down on um, over the edge of the pot and then I'm spraying more water onto the pot and manipulating the drips that came down. So this kept me from running the brush around the top of the pot because that would have changed the color of the rim completely and I did not want to do that. I just wanted to introduce um, like some salt water splashes to the pot. So uh, it ended up being a really fun technique. I like it and I think it's one that I will definitely use more. All right, we are finally down to just wanting to highlight the eyes and the lips on this pot. I just uh, wiped off as much paint from that brush as possible and just sort of dry brush right over the top of the eyes and then I'm spraying them with water as well because I want everything to look weathered and worn and I will do the exact same thing here in just a second over the mouth. So now the lips stand out and I'll spritz those with a little bit of water as well. And I think this pot I think I'm satisfied with this pot and we can move on to top coating the green pot now while this one dries. Okay, so this is what the paint looks like wet versus dry. So the darker blue, the blue moon to the right matches the paint that is in the can. However, the blue moon to the left is dried paint and it's much, much lighter. But when we apply our top coat in Gator Hide or the Terra Wax, one or the other, it will actually bring that dried lighter color back to the darker version on the right. All right, let's seal this paint. This paint does need to be sealed. Whatever top coat you choose for it, I recommend the wax or Gator Hide, um, if you can find it, if it's available for you. Gator Hide is a great top coat for anything that's going outdoors. Um, it is UV resistant um, and holds up really, really well to heat. <clears throat> so I am applying Gator Hide here with, um, I believe that I'm using my flat medium brush and it really, really accentuates the colors. You can see how the white drips show up better. Um, the color in the blue is really coming back to life from the dry, light, chalky look that it had just a minute ago. You can see that it, the Gator Hide dries with a little bit of a sheen, which is wonderful because it actually is water repellent as well, so the water just runs right off of it. I've done many clay pots in my backyard and they, um, a lot of them do have the Gator Hide top coat. So this works really well with the new, with the new Terra paint. Do you see here how I, um, when I run the top coat over it, that, that clay paint color comes back to its original color? It will stay, it locks that color in. It will stay exactly the darker blue. And I'm using it here on a, uh, the large pot that I did in the back where I just did some accentuated band with some color drips dripping down. That's the Lonnie's Lagoon that I'm covering there. And I also used the pistachio and I'm using the Gator Hide to seal right over. I want all of my drips sealed. I want that band sealed. So I'm just running a single coat of Gator Hide over it. It's dry really quickly and um, will set up in no time and these will withstand rain and sun and kids splashing. I love this look. I think it is just beautiful. It looks great with my Adirondack chairs. Um, and I will see how it stands the test of time versus the chalk mineral painted pots on the other side of my pool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are here every single Sunday with a brand new YouTube video to inspire you to brighten up your home and your outdoor space. We'll see you next week.